The basic idea is very straightforward. We are sandwiching two depth maps together and then we're using a Boolean operator to combine them into a single mesh. And that allows us to be able to create kind of different fronts and backs and it gives us a bunch more control over how those two meshes get combined together. For instance, if we wanted to have some sort of face change or we wanted to have like an armor switch, you do have to kind of stick to the same geometry. So there's going to be some differences there, but you can do impainting on this 3D model very easily because you're just impainting a texture below it that is already completely set up well for AI. So before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go back to image generation and talk a little bit about some of the constraints that can make our lives easier down the line. So in particular, having any sort of limbs or body parts be more spread out will help us a lot with this method. I find the A pose to be very effective. Uh, T poses sometimes end up making stable diffusion have difficulties finding the arms, especially if you're using like weird fantasy characters and stuff. Those things are really helpful. For consistent characters, it's really good to have the front and back of the characters on the same image, and that way they'll have the same hair color and a lot of things will be kind of learnt between the two. And so, and in particular with the, the back image, if you're using an image to image algorithm, it's really important to cover up the face. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up with kind of two front facing images and it, you still end up with this quite a bit anyways, but like you can kind of filter through them a lot better if you cover up the face in one of them with like hair or something. This method also works really well with buildings and other things. So we don't actually need to constrain ourselves to characters. Uh, buildings work just fine and so do pretty much anything else. You can use different images and as long as they're outline is the same, then you should be able to do this method pretty well. And so you can end up using control net to get some of these like constraints more buried down. So things like the canny, the segmentation, the line, like most most control net models actually would do, will really help you out with constraining it. Um, also just having a solid color background um, can help out quite a bit. There's also this really helpful lore that's called add details and it allows you to both add details and take details away. And like, it's just really effective. Okay, so on to the geometry. So we are going to be using depth maps. The depth map repo also had a recent addition of standalone mode, which allows you to kind of run it separately from auto 111. And it runs with much less memory requirements, which means that you can get really high resolution Zoe depth maps, even with like an eight gig card like I have. So I can now get 1024 by 1024 and just like a bunch of higher resolution depth maps with the standalone that wouldn't be possible in the normal extension. Uh, so to run that, you basically just go to the extension uh, folder and then you can do Python main and that'll start that up. It is in like very early stages. So if you do run into any problems, just make an issue about it. Um, it's like there's probably going to be some problems with it, but it does let you do things that you couldn't do without it. So it's like it's really great. I wanted to give a massive shout out to Saint Jean 00, who has been doing some massive work on the depth map repo. It has gotten so much cleaner in terms of code quality. Like the standalone mode is thanks to him. And there's a bunch of other features that are on their way. And there's the things that I'm probably missing right now. Um, but he's just done a massive amount of work so I just wanted to like big thanks really need to use Zoe depth it's just it's it, it works better than some of the other ones and we're going to be using Zoe depth and with the resolution um I find 512 by 512 gives the best kind of um overall shape but we can also layer on a level of like a higher resolution depth map if you have that accessible um and that can give some extra detailing but the 512 by 512 I just find gives like in terms of the overarching shape it has a really good shape to it and then we also do need to enable a back background removal. Um, so this allows it to mask out the background and set those depth values to zero. And that way we can kind of create this really nice depth sandwich later down the line. So with the background removal, there are a few different algorithms. I find isnet is the one that works the the, the best. Uh, so the main thing that you'll notice between um, isnet and u2net, the kind of older version, is that there, there's a lot of jaggies around the edges. So it can cause you a lot of trouble. So now we have our image and we have our depth map and we can do a few steps to make our our lives easier later down the line to help deal with those creases. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to apply a Gaussian blur along the edge of the depth map and basically it will help spread out the gradient for like how quickly that drop off is. So rather than it being a single face that like is the entire length, um, it'll spread that out a little bit. And then the second thing that we can do is we can actually use impainting plus um, a contour from OpenCV. So you can get these like really nice contours out of OpenCV. And then basically what you're doing is you're draw drawing around the edges and impainting that. Um, to kind of help break up 
that edge. And so those are two methods I found that have helped out. The Blender component is pretty straightforward. Basically what we're doing is we're adding uh, a grid. On top of that grid, we're adding a modifier with a texture and that texture will be our depth map. Make sure that you switch it to raw rather than the RGB that it'll be set to by default. And then we apply that modifier. Here's a good place to do the depth mixing if you're going to be doing it. So if you're using the two different resolutions of depth, you can kind of mix and match those here to try and make it look nice. Once you have everything applied, kind of just layer the two meshes on top of each other. You might need to make a cut with the edit tool to slice them in half and then kind of separate out the two meshes uh, if you're using a single mesh. But for the most part, yeah, you just separate them out, layer them on top of each other. And then we use the Boolean operator and the Boolean operator with union. And the union operator takes the outermost part of the mesh. But one of the neat little tricks that you could think about is that if you flip it inside out, then it actually takes the smallest part of the mesh. So basically we're doing inside out logic where um, because all of our normals are flipped so that the insides are outsides, it'll take the smallest area that like is enclosed. So it'll take an enclosure. Um, and that way we can have two different depth maps that have had their backgrounds removed, overlap them, and then cut them into pieces. So this way we can have um, a front and a back of an object be different meshes. And that's something that a lot of other methods that use mirroring methods don't allow you to do. So uh, this is just kind of a neat little trick. Um, and then after you're done with that, you should probably flip it back inside out. A lot of these meshes are initially going to be really poor quality. So they're going to have a lot of artifacts and things that you might not want for like further down the production line. And so there's a few tools that you can use to kind of help clean them up using the 3D modeling extension for Blender. And that allows you to look at things like non-manifold edges and then intersecting faces. And those two things in particular end up causing a lot of problems. So how you can deal with the both of those is that if you go to edit mode and then you like select all the ones that it finds, uh, I found that just collapsing them, usually they are on the seams. So if you collapse them on the seams, it usually doesn't have that big of an effect. Sometimes when you start collapsing, the entire mesh starts falling apart. So it's like not always a good idea. Also, you might want to reduce the number of vertices and the number of faces. And so you can use things like the decima decimate modifier or in the cleanup tab, there's some other tools that you can use for kind of removing unnecessary edges or like vertices that are too close together. For rigging, I would strongly suggest using Mixamo because uh, Blender and Rigify sometimes have a lot of challenges with these particular meshes. They're a little bit challenging to work with, whereas Mixamo seemed to do an all right job. In particular, making sure that your model doesn't have any fingers is really important. Uh, <laughs> that, that whole thing about AI not being able to do hands, it also can't rig hands apparently. So um, any model with hands will have a really hard time being used. So yeah. So I saw kind of a very similar mirroring method where they use the mirroring mo modifier in two different videos. And they're both an interesting watch too, where they use different strategies with adding extra subdividing modifiers and then using like the dragging sculpting tools to kind of improve their models. Uh, and so there's some really cool things that you can do with statics. I really like the Boolean modifier because it allows you to expand in kind of really interesting ways. So rather than having to have some sort of mirrored object, you can kind of start combining together a different back and front and even after that you can combine extra models on top of it so there's a lot more uh mod like you can do a lot more modifications with it uh but i do think the mirroring method is a lot simpler and it has some really like it might have some quality advantages to it too so like in particular if you're doing something that has natural symmetry to it uh i think the mirroring modifier seems to be the way to go for that so that's all i have for today have a great day